Hey guys, Arturia released a new version of Pigments, and so we're talking about Pigments 3 now. Um, and for this occasion, I thought I would try 11 classic synthesis methods uh, with a synthesizer. So, um, let's start. Wavetable. Uh, by default, Pigments is a wavetable synthesizer. You see, you, you start from this one engine here. And um, you just should go ahead and start moving this knob and and change your waveforms. And now we're talking wavetable synthesis. Um, so this is your starting point. Um, Arturia implemented really nice um, modulation matrix here. So it's different than in Serum. Uh, you, there's no drag and dropping, but you can either say, hey, I want LFO, three and now you move a uh, certain ring here although this is probably not uh, the most convenient but this the, the other mode is really fun let's say you want to move this position you want to modulate this position and you click on this plus and now all modulation sources are here so you can say i want a little bit of uh, LFO3, maybe some function, random. You can be more spontaneous this way and you see, you notice, you know, beautiful colors, pigments, right? It's a, it's a really gorgeously looking synthesizer as well. So, um, okay, this is, uh, so we, we have wavetable. Um, it's not a surprise. It's primarily wavetable synthesizer. Now, let's move to East Coast. When we uh, talk about East Coast, we think about those legendary synthesizers like this guy, right? Uh, Mini Moog, three oscillators. And no notice this, this knob over here when you can change modulation source uh, from oscillator three to noise. And guess what? We have the same stuff over here. Three oscillators and even this is implemented. So it's clearly, um, so we're clearly trying to um, imitate that classic design here and in addition we have um, filter modes here so mini mog is here um, let's have two oscillators let's detune them um, if you want to go ahead and be more authentic uh, probably you want to switch to mono or legato Right, so we have that. Uh, and we also have uh, Drift, uh, which simulates uh, those analog imperfections. You will have different pitch, uh, every note, slight, slight variations. So, um, so clearly, um, Pigments is very uh, East Coast friendly uh, and that kind of nostalgia sounds they're, they're trying to give you those possibilities here. Another classic synthesizers that, that uh, is, is loved is Jupiter 8, two oscillators and two layers. Um, and guess what? In Pigments, in this new version, they added Jupiter 8 filter. And because we have two engines, uh, each of them can have, you know, up to three oscillators. We can actually uh, emulate that Jupiter 8 sound. Again, we would probably switch to polyphonic mode here. Uh, and since we're talking Jupiter 8, we also have our arpeggiator. So, hey, you can do that. Uh, there's also filter from Matrix 12, so you can even do that. Um, clearly plenty of possibilities to mimic architecture of those legendary synthesizers. So definitely East Coast. Oh, and by the way, um, since we're talking about it, um, if you if you want super saw, it, it's also over here. Right. So for trance, it might be um, it might be um, also very useful. Okay. So that's. East Coast. Now let's talk about West Coast. So West Coast, when we think about West Coast, we usually mean um, Bukla. Uh, and uh, so this is this legendary easel. And um, there are two iconic uh, elements or mod modules of, of uh, Bukla uh, synthesizers. One is complex oscillator. Uh, wave folding, right? So we are starting from sine wave and we're wave folding. And another one is dual 
uh, on low pass gate. It doesn't have to be dual, but uh, yeah. we have low pass gate. It's so so low, low pass gate is a combination of very um, shallow filter, only six dB per octave, one pole filter, um, and it's also uh, kind of a hybrid between uh, VCA and in, the, in addition there are Vactrols. And Arturia imitated that here as well. So in order to do that, you from new preset, you can start from the sine wave. Um, and wave folding is right here. Right, so first thing we have, uh, we have already um, ready. And, um, and then you have low pass gate. So let's say I want to modulate it from um, let's say envelope two. And interestingly, uh, you have, by the way, have both mode VCA low pass. So we, they're clearly going for that bookla design here. And we have Vactrol. So if you try envelope that is ridiculously short like this, um, right, it's just probably one millisecond you still hear the sound here and you can adjust Vactrol time. All right, so clearly we can do West Coast. Now let's see FM. Um, starting from default wavetable, um, here we have frequency um, modulation, FM. Uh, there are two modes. One is this old-fashioned exponential, which you will find on uh, analog synthesizers. And when you increase modulation amount, you're you're losing the pitch, right? But if you use linear, this is what we usually mean by this modern digital uh, frequency modulation um, that is uh, kind of, you know, based on on that kind of, uh, on, on the, that Phil Collins sound from DX7, right? One of the most uh, successful synth uh, ever. And here's uh, here's kind of irony. DX7, even though when we when we mention DX7, we think FM. In reality, it was implemented using phase modulation. So it's like a really funny historical quirk. Guess what? We have that too. Uh, let's switch to pigments. Okay. And notice how similar they both sound so you can do both you can mix you can you can do whatever you want uh, just bear in mind that the the oscillator or operator that is modulating is over here so this will also be very important right how you set up those ratios and let's modulate it quickly um, and there are obviously different uh, techniques. For example, if you want to go for uh, some kind of house, uh, deep house bass, uh, you get it. So anyway, uh, FM, PM, uh, check. Let's do phase distortion. Um, so when we think about phase distortion, we usually um, talk about Casio C, Z uh, series um, that Arturia also emulated here. And so let's go for a new preset. Um, so the way it works is that you start from sine wave and you tilt it, just observe over here. And it's just achieved by, um, by some kind of phase distortion function. Right, so you can man manipulate that that original waveform, and they did it because they 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 were cheap. They didn't want to use filters, where, which were expensive. So notice in this synthesizer, you do not have filters because you can emulate that subtractive sound uh, using only phase distortion. So in pigments, what we would do is uh, we can even get rid of this filter, and we have phase distortion again. We can modulate it. Right, so it sounds like we don't use filter, but we can do uh, do that. And we have multiple modes, um, and how you can combine it with other waveforms as well. Nothing stops you from that. So okay, we do have uh, phase distortion check. Uh, let's see, 
Thank you, Minimog. Um, sampler. Okay, so this is this. I, I wouldn't use the synthesizer for as a sampler because it would be very. Uh, it's very primitive. It's more like a simpler. But um, it's nice to have it here because you can layer it with with other sound. You, you have some editing modes. You can, you can load a few different samples and then you can do some interesting stuff around Robin. So it's very nice. It's almost like a. I, I'm thinking about. I think about it more like an auxiliary engine that you mix with something else. And most importantly, that sampler engine opens up um, new avenues for three different types of synthesis methods. So um, first of all would be this this historical uh, linear arithmetic, which is a fancy term of mixing a tag portion of a sample with. Um, with synthesized sounds, so you can uh, you can have you can uh, let's say uh, we have two samples. Let's just a quick reset sample, right? So what they would do to save uh, memory in those old synthesizers would be to have attack portion of the sound, and then let's say we could do you another engine over here. I'm not sure if if today in in 2021, it's uh, particularly useful, but maybe if you want to go into this historical sound design, um, you could try doing it in pigments, uh, pigments as well. And finally, this is granular. This is not history. This is this is actually why I believe it's worth getting pigments, even for this one synthesis type. It's, in my opinion, one of the best granular uh, synthesizer, and it's also simple. And I think people often overlook it because uh, it does so many other things. So you, in order to do granular, you do sample engine. And over here you have granular. And it's just wonderful. It's, you can really swamp that pad with uh, incredible amount of grains. You can also do some uh, rhythmic effects. Uh, it can be synced, um, everything can be randomized. Um, it's a really, in my opinion, fantastic e sounding engine with plenty of samples uh, at your disposal. Granular, strongly recommend this one. Okay, let's do phase modeling. Um, uh, physical modeling, face modeling, what did I say? Face modeling. Uh, physical modeling, um, or uh, yeah, car plus strong um, for physical modeling, we need an um, exciter. So in this case, we're going for sample. And I will pick one of those uh, kick uh, samples. And here's an, an, important, an important part. Uh, if you go to edit mode, you can change the pitch of that sample. Don't use cores, and you'll, you'll later see why. I use a root node because we need to uh, be able to adjust that. And the second element is you go to this unison and change it to resonator. Right? And now the beautiful part is that by just changing that uh, pitch of, of, it, of the kick, we can shape the sound. In addition, we have inharmonicity here for those glassy sounds. So it's, it's really lovely. Um, and hey, this is just a kick, but you can um, do some other stuff like, like Foley uh, or field recordings. Right? You can load your own samples and uh, I know there are some, probably some streams here or <laughs> some other, uh, other field recordings, right? Water fountain. wind jungle right a um, lot of lot of possibilities and it's still a very simple engine so yeah uh, rudimentary physical modeling uh, let's then okay additive uh, so this is the new new toy here that that's what they added um, in pigments 3 uh, new engine harmonic uh, and it's really nice because we don't have that many additive synthesizers uh, on the market so um, each new synthesizer like that is, is really welcome, or each new engine. Uh, so when you first load it, you hear something that 
sounds like so but then you can you can really decide on how many of them you have you can split odd and even in stereo you can uh, add some filtering or we can shape it uh, different offsets you know can you can start really messing around even ratios uh, with window you can uh, attenuate or amplify some some of the specific overtones uh, very kind of surgical uh, interesting unusual sounds so additive yes definitely it's designed to be very good additive synthesizer and just before we go i want to um, do something it's maybe technically it's not a separate synthesis method it's a formant synthesis is just a special case of subtractive synthesis um, and all you need to do is analog uh, or any kind of you know waveform here and then filter switch to formant so it's so you can have some funny effects right and now we can, we can and this one too okay that's too much uh, all right um <laughs> four um so yeah i i think it's pretty amazing that we have this really gorgeously looking synthesizer from a really wonderful company um with um really nice comfortable uh, modulation matrix um and all of that can be done in this one synth. Uh, so strongly recommend you get into it. And at first you will feel that it's slower to work in pigments than serum. And it's kind of more uh, this, this slightly steeper learning curve. But once you get past that, this is super friendly synthesizer. Um, and um, yeah, I, I, I really love this one. So uh, thanks guys for watching. I hope it was helpful and perhaps inspiring. And uh, yeah, see you around.